Hello, I'm Jeffrey Hamm, Equity Analyst for Briefing.com. Today is Friday, May 29th. The S&P 500 spent nearly the entire session gyrating within a narrow range amid light trading volume. But it managed to close at session highs following a late flurry of buying and a spike in trading volume. In what was May's final trading session, more than 1.8 billion shares traded hands on the New York Stock Exchange, the most in more than one month. Financial stocks were integral to the late move. After being a source of weakness for most of the session, financial stocks rallied from a loss in excess of 1% to finish with a near 2% gain in the final hour. While financial stocks made a strong finish, material stocks spent the entire session trading with enviable gains. The sector closed 3% higher, propped up by diversified metals and mining companies, steel stocks, and gold stocks. Gold stocks were helped along by a run-up in gold prices. Gold contracts settled pit trading with the yellow metal priced at $979 per ounce, up 1.8% for the session and up more than 20% from their 2009 lows. Gold prices are now less than 3% below their 2009 highs. Meanwhile, crude oil prices rallied 1.7% to finish at a fresh six-month high of $66.21 per barrel. A 1.5% drop in the dollar index helped underpin a broad ascent by commodities. As such, the CRB Commodity Index finished 1.3% higher. Commodities finished May with a gain of more than 14%, outperforming the S&P 500, which logged a monthly gain of just over 5%. Still, the S&P 500 has finished the last three months with gains. General Motors has had an awful month, however. The stock has lost more than half of its value since the start of May, as the company comes face-to-face with the government's restructuring deadline. With the threat of bankruptcy looming, shares of GM are at record lows. In other corporate news, J. Crew posted upside first quarter earnings and guided second quarter earnings above the consensus forecast, winning at favor among investors. The stock logged one of its best single session performances by surging more than 25%. Dell was less fortunate, though. The company faltered after posting better than expected earnings. In economic news, preliminary first quarter GDP showed a 5.7% drop for the first quarter which was a slight improvement from the 6.1% decline that had been reported in the advance GDP reading. Participants showed little reaction to the data, though, since most of it was already known. I'm Jeffrey Hamm for Briefing.com, and thanks for listening.